Hey everybody, so here we are in our fourth week, beginning our fourth week. I'm recording this Sunday, September 6th. Of course, Labor Day is the 7th. Happy Labor Day and happy Labor Day weekend. Hope you all had a good one. Um, I'm still releasing this video Monday just to be uh, keeping up with what I normally do here and give you all the full, uh, full week to uh, have an opportunity to view it. Your announcement is released as well. And again, don't forget to look at these videos and uh, read the announcements uh, at the start of every week. Uh, for this week, we have our descriptive essay. It's our second essay. Your narratives are going to be graded and returned to you, uh, probably as of you all seeing this video. What I mean by that is I'm going to get them done, uh, probably, probably have them all done by Monday, uh, Labor Day, the 7th. Okay, so you'll get your narratives back and kind of get an, a feel for uh, my expectations and how I go about grading things. Of course, it's graded to a rubric. Uh, it's the same rubric for all papers based on content, uh, structure, uh, style, and grammar, and format. So it's, do you have a thesis statement, or in the case of your narrative, uh, that pivotal moment? And do you back that up in body paragraphs with supporting details? Uh, do you have a conclusion that summarizes everything that you've written? Uh, are your paragraphs structured as paragraphs, uh, preferably with transitions in between each paragraph, uh, as in the first thing, the second thing, the third thing? Or uh, you could begin paragraphs with however, if you're trying to show uh, some kind of distinction between paragraph A and paragraph B. Um, uh, dis, uh, excuse me, um, transitions are usually what they call conjunctive uh, adverbs, adverbs that act as conjunctions, like incidentally, or actually, or therefore, or things like that. Uh, so it's a good idea to have transitions in between your uh, paragraphs. So if you have all those things and your grammar is relatively error-free and it's the format that adheres to the paper format attachment, that's Times New Roman, 12-point font, double-spaced, an original title, MLA heading, your last name, upper right of each uh, corner uh, with the page number. If you do all those things, you, you're going to do pretty well. So I'm, I'm a pretty big stickler for the, the formatting. Uh, so make sure that your paper looks like it's supposed to look and that paper format attachment is there in the lessons tab for you all to uh, know exactly what's expected of you. Now the narrative, I'm going to be a little uh, easier on you on that. You know, if it's a complete train wreck uh, and it looks as though uh, an alien who is from Mars who's never spoken the English language has tried to write a, your essay, well, that's a problem. But if, if it's reasonably competent and you are fulfilling the assignment requirements, um, you're going to do just fine. Okay. So you're descriptive. So your narrative, you are focused on telling a story, uh, a story uh, revolving around a single incident, a pivotal, climactic, uh, meaningful life experience. Okay. And the examples you read in the reader and the uh, exercises you did in the SCC book are uh, all related to narrative, okay? Similarly, uh, the past week you all had some SCC uh, exercises on description, writing descriptions based on uh, location, um, having an organizing principle, uh, which is really another word for having a sense of how you want your essay to uh, be laid out and how you want it to flow from one idea to the next and again transitions help with the fluidity of your paper okay so you had an exercise this past week uh, about uh, organizing structure for uh, a descriptive uh, writing exercise um, and you all had those two examples E.B. White's Once More to the Lake which is one of my absolute favorite readings we're going to do in 1101 uh, and also a very, uh, an equally compelling read, uh, Goodbye to My Twinkie Days, okay? Both descriptive passages in different ways, um, but what you all are doing this time is you're picking a thing, a topic, a subject, be that a person, place, thing, or idea, and describe that person, place, 
thing or idea in such a way that it pops off the page, that you have painted a word picture, let's say, having used vivid uh, images, compelling adjectives um, to help this thing come to life, okay? So a person, you could write about your grandmother. It doesn't have to be a story about your grandmother. Uh, it should just be a, an account, a descriptive account uh, of her. Uh, who is she? What does she do? What do you admire about her? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a place, your favorite vacation destination. Uh, same idea. What makes it interesting, fun? Describe it. Okay. Make me want to go there. Okay. Uh, you could write about an idea, a concept like love or jealousy. Describe those things. Describe those emotions to me. Okay. Uh, and you want to be careful about descriptive writing because you could go too hard or too soft with the descriptors, okay? And in fact, there's another assignment this week that asks you to think about that idea. It's our journal assignment for the week. Now remember, you must do the journals. Blogs are voluntary, journals are mandatory. So we're, we're going to have a journal that corresponds with a paper due that week. This week, our descriptive paper due, we have a descriptive uh, entry for our journal. And what I ask you to do for the journal is to reflect on descriptive writing. What happens, I ask you, if you overload your essay with descriptors? For example, what happens if I tell you I ate a big, red, juicy, delicious, succulent, uh, dripping with ambrosia apple? Okay, so that's one way of describing things. Now what if I told you I ate a big, red, delicious apple? Okay, I'm being descriptive in both examples. But the second example, I'm being much more concise. I'm not getting carried away with my descriptors, okay? With my adjectives, all right? So you wanna make sure that you're not going overboard with descriptions because it could be a little wordy, right? And if it's a tedious read for your reader, um, they're not gonna really want to keep reading. They're, they're gonna get bored and maybe uh, put off a little bit. So you wanna strike a nice little balance between enough description and not too much description. Okay, so the journal entry, which must be at least two paragraphs, if you want full credit, okay, must be uh, devoted to that idea. Uh, so our journal and, of course, our descriptive essay due by the end of the week. I'll have your narratives back to you uh, probably no later than that first half of the week. Okay, I, I hope to have them all returned to you uh, by Monday the 7th. Okay. So get in touch with me this week if you need any help or guidance. Remember, I'm not going to have time uh, to look at rough drafts, but with the feedback and the grade that you all receive for this narrative essay, I, I hope that it's some kind of built-in guidance uh, and indication of how you should do things uh, from here on out when it comes to writing essays, okay? So let your grade and the few comments I give you be your guide for this second one, okay? So guys, I'm going to keep things short and sweet this week. I think I've said all that I have to say. Just keep up. Some of you aren't keeping up. Um, and if you're not keeping up, I, you know, I, I'm not hunting after you. I'm not chasing after you. You either do your work or you don't. Uh, that is an online class for you. Um, so please don't fall behind. Okay. Uh, and do what's expected of you because ultimately it's up to you. Okay. Uh, if you're going to do the work or not. Okay, I know we have hectic, busy lives. I've told you about mine. Okay, I know you have them too. Uh, so you gotta strike a good balance. Okay, make the time to do what you need to do. Okay, I right, have a great week. Hope you had a great, or are having a great Labor Day. Uh, and I will see you next week. Peace, bye.